I'm Lee Iridium. Hope everyone's doing all right today. Coming from the car again, so back to work on my break doing videos. So it's quite cool actually. It's quite relaxing. Don't know why, but it is. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the A to Z of overlooked, underrated artists. So I did, I seem to skip some stuff. I don't know how I've done it. But um, I did a video with Mark Clower. I did Tony Martin and realised that I forgot quite a few L's that I was going to mention. So I know it's been a while since I've done one of these shows and I'm stirring my cut tea as well, of course, just to annoy everyone. And I've got three artists to talk about in L. I did start the L's, but there was quite a bit under L. So if I'm making any sense whatsoever, good. So L, overlooked underrated artists and these are three brilliant bands projects i suppose so two from the 80s era um and one from very recently so the first one i want to talk about is an amazing band who are still going today started in the 80s lizzie Borden. me against the world against the world, against the world. i love Lizzie Borden. I think they're absolutely brilliant. American heavy metal band from LA. I suppose you could call it shock rock, like when they're on stage and stuff. Uh, I mean, they used to like chainsaws and a bit like Wasp, but even more, a bit, bit more freaky, I suppose. Um, active from 83 to 96, took a little bit of a break, from, then went from 99 to 2004, then 2006 to the present. So, not a lot, you know, a three-year gap, then another couple of year gap. Seven studio albums. Um, and, you know, in variety, I would say there's some outstanding ones and some that are good. There's none that are really bad. Um, even from the debut album was really good. I suppose back in the 80s, the, the first couple of albums suffered a little bit for production. But I think they started hitting their stride in 86 with Menace to Society, which was a real heavy, great album. Um, Visual Lies, which is my favourite album from then. It's literally a 10 out of 10 album in 87. And Master of Disguise in 89. Really good run of three albums there in the 80s. And, you know, My Midnight Things, which came out in 2018. That was a good album as well. So still making great music. Still sounding brilliant live. Uh, Lizzie Borden. I'm not... It's obviously not his real name. That's the singer <laughs> as well. So Lizzie Borden's the band. Lizzie Borden's the singer, I think. Anyway, uh, it's got a great voice in the vein of, you know, Bruce Dickinson. Bit of Jeff Tate in there. Sort of that, you know, can reach some real highs. Excellent band. Always love Lizzie Borden. Check them out if you haven't already. There's a good chance you have. Next on my overlooked and underrated artists... A band that sort of came and went very quickly in the 80s. The band Lion. So, really good American hard rock band. Sometimes, some people would say heavy metal. If you're talking genres these days, you can't really say it's heavy metal. But back then, you would say heavy metal. But now, you'd say it's hard rock, I suppose. Or heavy rock. So... Active from 83 to 89, so very short period of time. Two albums, Dangerous Attraction and Trouble in Angel City. Dangerous Attraction is a debut album. It is one of the, it's sort of got a cult status now, I suppose, as one of the best hard rock albums in the 80s. But a lot of people still probably maybe not have heard them as well. So, brilliant band, hooks all over the place, so catchy. That typical 80s sound. If you love the 80s stuff, you're going to love both of these albums, though. Um, they even ventured into some soundtrack stuff. So they were, you know, they were gaining popularity. Um, they did a song for Friday the 13th, Chapter 4. And Transformers as well. Must have been the cartoon because it was like 86, 1986. So the drummer had a serious accident. Um... He had a, he got a broken neck, so they sort of disbanded just a month later and never came back, never recovered. And you know what? A lot of people sort of call out for this band. I don't know 
if all the members are about now. I haven't really looked into what they're doing. But I'm sure, you know, whoever's left, whoever wants to, if Frontiers got hold of this band, I think they, you know, a lot of people would like that. You know, a lot of that would be a popular release. It really would. So check out Lion if you haven't already. The last one I want to talk about is more of a project. Tony Harnell um, in 2019 released an album under the name Love Killers. What happened to the love you had? It was Love Killers featuring Tony Harnell. And this was a Frontiers project. Alessandro Del Vecchio, who does so much of the Frontier stuff, wrote this album, I think with a bit of help from um, from Tony Harnell. Um, but I think the main songwriter is Alexandro, Alessandro Del Vecchio. He does the bass, the keyboards. There's a few other musicians that are, appear on a lot of the Frontiers projects. And um, this is like that sort of TNT sound. So it was meant to go back to that sort of TNT sound and for the most part did. Hooks and melodies, Tony Harnell's amazing vocals all over this album. He, he hasn't skipped a beat. He really hasn't. You know, he's one of them singers again that, you know, you're just like, wow, how does he do it? I don't know how old he is now, 50 something, probably. Um, and he's got an amazing voice to this day. So... If you love, you like, you know, your Tony Harnell singing over those melodic hard rock songs or melodic rock as well, melodic hard rock, check out Love Killers. It's a great, great album. You won't be disappointed. They're my three overlooked, underrated artists for today under the letter L. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've heard any of these bands. Let me know if you're going to check them out. So, and I'll see you next time.